Hi folks, Dr. Ed Byer from Byer Natural Health Solutions in Tinley Park, Illinois. You know, I've been in practice 33 years and, and I treat a lot of chronic conditions through what's called functional medicine, which is where we're really interested in why you have what you have, not just in what you have, right? So one of the biggest issues that we see is a lot of people have a poor gut microbiome. Now, I want to share with you some terms because there's some confusion here. I like the term microbiome, which I'll describe in a little bit, but there's other words, uh, terms that are used like gut flora or probiotics. Those are synonymous, microbiome, probiotics, and gut flora, and their role in our health, especially immunity. Now, there are over a hundred trillion microbes that live in us or on us, over a thousand species, mostly bacteria, a little bit of yeast. Now, these microbes, 80% of them reside in our gut, but the other 20% reside on our skin, mucous membranes, upper respiratory tract, and lower genital urinary tract, especially in females. When these 100 trillion microbes uh, are in the correct amount, they do, an they do some very important beneficial things for us, and, and we provide a hospitable home for them. Now, when we're born, our guts are aseptic. There's no microbes at all. In fact, we get our first mouthful of beneficial flora, hopefully, from our mother's vaginal canal and skin contact. And then when we're breastfed, breastfed, colostrum, which is a protein in all mammals, in our mother's milk, breast milk, not formula, <laughs> allows for the colonization or growth of these beneficial microbes in the infant. Now, overgrowth of beneficial microbes cause many problems in the digestive tract known as dysbiosis or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. We're gonna talk about that a little bit. The functions of the gut flora or the gut microbiome via fermentation is the gut flora produce these products called short-chain fatty acids, which are postbiotics, also known as butyrate, acetate, and propionate. These short-chain fatty acids have many, many important functions, including they're the primary energy source for the gut cells, which slough off every five to seven days, and we need to rebuild new ones. The short-chain fatty acids are extremely anti-inflammatory. They're anti-carcinogenic. Many studies show this, and they regulate the immune system. So poor gut flora is a huge trigger to autoimmune disease because the, auto, the, 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 auto, the immune system is not being regulated. Now, in addition, these uh, short to producing short-chain fatty acids, the gut flora keeps our gut barrier healthy by crowding out potentially pathogenic organisms. Well, every time we eat, there's, we eat germs and they're constantly being, the gut's being bombarded. These healthy bacteria keep them out. They're like, uh-uh, get out of here. This is our home, right? The gut flora also function in synthesizing the eight different B vitamins. Um, and they convert uh, inactive K1, vitamin K1, to vit vitamin K2, which is important for vitamin D. They remove toxins that we ingest, including medications. Why do some people react to medications overly or don't react at all? That medication does not inform me, or this one makes me crazy. A lot of it has to do with the status of the gut microbiome. Now. They help regulate fat burning. There's over 138 studies that relate to fat, fat burning and the ability to keep fat off our body or lose weight and the gut microbiome. Do you ever wonder why someone easily loses weight or you lose 20 pounds and you can't lose any more? I'm telling you, in the clinical practice 33 years, the status of the gut microbiome has a lot to do with that. The microbiome also is important in proper digestion and absorption of nutrients. What I hear a lot is, Dr. Beyer, I'm taking vitamin D. Why is it so low on my lab? I'm taking you know, B vitamins. Why does it show low on my lab? It's because you're not absorbing it. Taking it is one thing, absorbing it is another. In addition, the gut flora helps remove excessive histamine from the body. I cannot tell you how many patients with allergies that we've gotten better because we correct the gut microbiome. The gut microbiome converts a very prevalent uh, amino acid that we get in our diet called glutamate into GABA, GABA aminobutyric acid, which is a calming neurotransmitter. Do you know how many people suffer with lack of GABA and anxiety? 
it's ubiquitous. So we have to create, we fix the gut microbiome and they become less anxious. It regulates the motility of our bowels. It removes cholesterol and used up hormones. So poor gut microbiome can be related to hormone imbalances. It increases the concentration of these chemicals known as pyruvic acid, citric acid, fumaric acid, and malic acid. These are all used in the mitochondria, which are the powerhouses or energy factories in our cells. They jumpstart the immune system. That that's what uh, in, in, in the development in infant's immune system. So now some definitions that I really want to uh, share with you to clarify some confusion a lot of people have. We have prebiotics. Now these are non-digestible fibers used by beneficial microbes to ferment. That's how they feed. And then you give off a little bit of gas. If you have overgrowth, then you're going to give up too much gas, and that's what causes gas and distension, or IBS. Probiotics are the actual living microorganism that can provide benefits to the human health. Now remember, 80% of them are in the gut, but they're also on our skin, upper respiratory tract, and lower general urinary tract. So when the gut microbiome is off, we can see changes in the skin microbiome, and or in the upper in the sinuses and lower general urinary tract. So a lot of like sinus problems, skin issues like eczema, or poor skin, um, and lower and, and UTIs are related to the gut microbiome. Once we fix that, the other parts of the microbiome on the skin upper sinuses, lower general urinary tract fix themselves. It's frustrating to me, people come in, they have chronic sinusitis or urinary tract infections, and they're on antibiotics, which is further destroying the gut microbiome. And so the problem is actually down here, manifesting itself in other areas of the microbiome. They all talk to each other. Then we have this word called, this term called post Biotics. That's the product of fermentation of the prebiotics by the probiotics, postbiotics, post, uh, post known as short chain fatty acids uh, produced by the probiotics via fermentation. We already discussed how important they are. Then there's another word called symbiotic, which is a prebiotic fiber and a probiotic together. These are used a lot in supplements. Now, what would cause a low gut flora? Well, number one, C sections. If you're born C section, Section, you're not getting that inoculation because when we're born we don't have any bacteria in our gut so we're not getting that inoculation from mom and you know it's funny in 1970 you know when their technology wasn't as good only five percent of births were c-section in 2010 31 percent Wow. So you wonder why there's so many children with ADD and ADHD, middle ear infections, and all these different things, because their immune systems aren't getting that initial inoculation. And then a lot of children aren't breastfed. You need that colostrum and you need that contact with mother's skin to further develop the microbiome. And then a lot of mothers aren't healthy when they get pregnant. So they have, they have poor microbiomes themselves, and that initial inoculation isn't so good. A lot of children are on antibiotics. What angers me is they're on antibiotics for viral infections, which are what most middle ear infections are. And the doctor just puts them on a antibiotic, which destroys the developing gut microbiome. Poor pH in the, um, in, the, in the stomach will upset the milieu or the environment of the gut and not allow these bacteria to grow like they should. Taking proton pump inhibitors, which are some of the worst medications you can take for your health. Things like Nexium and Prilosec, Omeprazole, uh, Pantoprazole, all of those. And then any type of immunosuppressant drug is going to do it too. Poor diet, lack of fiber. These microbes need fiber. They need the prebiotic fiber to develop and have, and be, have diversity. So low fruit, low vegetable diversity. And then alcohol is a huge destroyer of the gut microbiome. Hormone imbalances in females, the ratios between progesterone and estro estrogen is huge for the microbiome, and in males, testosterone and estrogen. So, and then poor brain-gut connection. The brain controls gut function. The major uh, nerve, the major highway between the lower brain stem and the gut is called the vagus nerve. We investigate that in all of our patients and there are ways of stimulating it. So these are things that traditional medicine doesn't look at, and, and these are reasons why so many of us are walking around with poor uh, gut microbiomes and ill health. I'm Dr. Ed Beyer. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did and you want future videos, please remember to like and subscribe to my YouTube page. And if you know anyone that's suffering from this, please share it with them. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.